Today, we're going to go back in time. Back, back, back. Okay, not that far back. The year was 1982, and I had this little record player with like a single mono speaker on it, and I was grooving really hard to disco. Then my parents took me to my aunt and uncle's house where they had this mystical, magical thing called cable. And on that cable, there was a channel called MTV, which I had never seen before. And I was hanging out, watching it, and the first video I saw was this song called You've Got Another Thing Coming by the band Judas Priest. I think it was at that moment that my ass dropped. From there on out, I was all metal. I got a real stereo system, still with a record player, you know, it was 82, like I said. And I was listening to Iron Maiden, Dio, and Priest, and all the real, like, metal music of the time. And fast forward a few years, and out comes this band that, at the time, seemed so heavy that I didn't think it was possible they would ever go beyond a niche band and just have only fans that were the most true of headbangers. Metallica. That's the band we're talking about today. But first, a word from me. So last week, I started this series called The Top 5 Habits of, insert player's name here, and I did it with a video on Yngwie Malmsteen. And after a bunch of discussion with some people on Reddit and guys on a guitar forum that I go to, uh, I kind of was like figured out that the top five habits was not the right way to give the name to these videos. And so um, changing it around a little bit, it's the same format, but now I'm calling the videos how to learn from or how to play like without ripping off, as you saw in the title here. And, and really that's what this is about. The idea is to learn the music or learn from the music of famous players and bands that you love and find a way to take their style and expound on it and mangle it up and turn it into something that's your own style. Anybody can become like a little copy bot of a band, but is that really the player you want to be? I know it wasn't true for me. So let's get on with the lesson here. What I've done is prepare a mini song like I usually do in which I tackle a few of the items. In this instance, there's a trio of items that we're gonna be talking about. And I'll break the song up into pieces and then we'll talk about what I did in each one and how the idea kind of originated with what I heard from Metallica and how I turned it into my own thing. And you'll see from it, the song doesn't sound anything like Metallica except for maybe a little tiny piece of the lead. And uh, hopefully what you're gonna get out of this is exactly what I'm trying to do here, see my thought process and how it evolved from their ideas, and you can evolve it with your own ideas. So that said, let's take a look at the first snippet. Okay, so in that first piece here, you can see I'm playing a little clean part. It's an E minor. I've got some open strings. I'm moving the bass note. And where that originates with Metallica starts with when I heard one. And you have that very simple, and then it moves the bass note. And so the concept, there's two concepts that I took here from a couple of Metallica things, and especially one. One was that I had always been playing all my chords the full chord all the time. I wasn't mixing open strings in. And here, when I saw what they were doing, I don't know why it hadn't occurred to me before, but I'm like, oh, I can put an open string in with my chords and it allows me to make all these voicings that I couldn't normally do and get all these other notes mixed in. So I started mixing chords with open strings when they were in the key. That was thing one. The other thing, the bigger part of it, was the idea of playing uh, a repetitive part of the chord where I just moved the bass note. And there's so many things you can do with that, so many directions. And like I did here, I have the E in the root, then the B, the C, then I moved the chord. There are so many ways you can go with this. Do something like in the key of A. And again, it's not something that Metallica like invented, but it was the first time I heard it and it led me down a whole road of writing and ideas. And that's the first takeaway from this. Now let's take a look at the second snippet and what the takeaways are from that. OK, 
Okay, here you see me get into the heavier rhythm part. And what was different here was not so much about what I was playing, but how I was positioning what I was playing. In other words, I was following the drums. Usually it had been kind of reserved to the bass player to think about what the drummer was doing. And in a lot of uh, like modern metal tracks, or at the time they were modern, a lot of 80s hair metal stuff, it was just eighth notes, you know. Guys were just chugging along and not really caring what the uh, drummer did. The drummer even came after the riff a lot of the times. And here with Metallica, you started to see where they were syncing up uh, like low notes to the bass drum. And they were syncing up like high notes to snare hits. Now, I'm not playing actual Metallica riffs here, but I'm just giving you the point. Um, and so with this snippet, I was locking my rhythm part in to the bass drum and sometimes the snare hits. And this is something that you've seen as metal has progressed and we've gone into the more modern stuff. It has really grown into a whole subgenre, what they call gent, where they really, they just lock everything up and it's completely like bass and snare inform the guitar what to play. And you know, you could just go along that route if you just want to be another gent player. But to me, I would think about uh, locking up with certain portions of it at certain times, um, changing the level of complexity of what the drums are doing and what you're mixing with it and, and what you're hitting with it. Maybe you're hitting like on, on downbeats of the bass. And you're locking up with it and you can change the chords, it gives you voicings. That kind of thing. I'm not syncing this up obviously with a, a real drum track right now, which is you know, that was what the snippet was for. But uh, the idea and the takeaway for this, if you're just a player that kind of chugs along eighth notes, quarter notes, whatever, think about what the drums are doing and see where you can come in and out of syncing up with them to make parts more interesting and different. And again, this is what I took away from early parts of what I heard from Metallica. Now, finally, the third piece of it is the most uh, Metallica thing I did on all this, I think. And that was uh, something that I heard Kirk Hammett doing in his leads to play kind of flashy parts. And they were good things for a player uh, at my level at that time, like an intermediate player just kind of coming up that sound really flashy and they're cool for listeners, but they weren't like Yngwie crazy difficult and they still sounded really cool. And you hear him use it a lot. He does these things where he's just pulling off of a string. And going to so pulling off from the first string, you got two notes, and then playing the second string. You'll hear Kirk Hammett do that kind of stuff really fast and all over the place. And what I did was very similar to it, but just to, uh, added a little bit of a twist where it was. His stuff is just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I was doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So with this lead, it's uh, the G15 pulling off to the 12th fret on the E string, then the 15th fret in the B string, and then back up to the 12th fret on the E string. And then the next note, I do the same exact pattern, but instead of starting on 15, I start on 17. And that's the kind of thing I was playing, and I did it again in this position. And again, there are all kinds of directions you can go with this, and you can take it and expound upon it and turn it into lots of different lead ideas. I like to do stuff where I build up horizontally through a scale. I'll do like a... And so there are many different directions you can take this in. And I'm not going to do too many of them here because the whole point of this is for you to think about it and find your own. Just take this little snippet and go off in a creative direction of how can I do this different and make it part of my own style. So there's three quick takeaways and ideas that for me originated with things I heard with Metallica. And I hope there are three little concepts that maybe you hadn't thought of before that you can also take and expound upon. And I hope you came up with some cool ideas and cool music that's different than them, different than me, different than everything. It's just you. And if you do come up with something cool, hey man, record it, send me a link, share it in the comments. I like to hear what uh, viewers of these videos are coming up with and what they're getting out of it. And hopefully it's something good. And uh, guys, that's it for this lesson. Until next time, keep making great music.